There is nobody like this player on Yasuo. P Zang, guys. 1100 LP in Korea. His second account, 1000 LP. His third account, his Yone account, 845 LP in challenge. He has three challenger accounts playing Yasuo and Yone exclusively. Today's video, guys, is going to break down some of his most insane carries on the Korean server. Let's jump straight onto the Rift. Onto the level one, and I'm interested to see how he plays it. Usually, you'll start in your lane and you'll 2Q on these chickens. But you can see there, uh, the Yasuo denies it. So you put two Qs onto that Wraith camp there, and you can start with a Tornado, and you can actually get this that wave right there. Do you see that wave he's missing now? Um, because into a ranged matchup, you need to play really far back. You can kind of start the lane out, and you can see 0 CS. He starts the Doran Shield, and this is why. These ranged matchups are so goddamn hard to play, and he is one of the best at denying these ranged matchups and really taking over in the early game. Um, and that's the reason he's so consistent. The only reason he's able to outclimb all the other Yasuo mains is not because of his mechanics. His mechanics are top tier, equal to the best, but it's his decision making that gives him the consistency to outrank all of them, okay? He is so consistent, he is so reserved in his playmaking. He knows when to go all in, go for an insane play, but he also knows when to hang back and not feed all of those classic Yasuo deaths that most Yasuo's do, and you can see this Lucian playing super aggro, but it's too aggro. He's tanking all of the minions. He's getting that minion aggro into the wave. And Pizang is able to even the trade with him. Hasn't even popped his health potion yet. Whilst the Lucian has already used it. And we can just sit back with that Doran shield. Dodge these Qs out. And Yasuo is perfect in the meta right now. There's a lot of these Graguses. Um, there's plenty of like uh, Malphites. Uh, Diana in the meta. There's so many knock-up champions. It's very good at the moment. And we're seeing it even in probe play. I, I witnessed the Showmaker Yasuo again. The other day, Perks has been playing a lot of it in EU. Yasuo is fine in the meta. I do think you'll probably find more consistency with Yone early on. But I think Yasuo is a champion that's worth investing a lot of time in. Super fun to play. Um, and at the top of the skill ceiling, it's very rewarding. Um, like champions like Kiana, like the Fizz, things like this. And he's dropping a shit ton of CS. Too many low elo players don't realize that it's fine to drop CS early, okay? If your matchup is is mid to late game dominant, you'll get the CS back, oh, back then, okay? Later on in the game. Sack some of the early. Make sure you're getting the XP. XP is the most important. But sack the early and you'll make up for it when you come into the mid late game, won't you? You don't need it all in every single time in the early game. As the Q lands, Lucian very low on mana here. We're down 11 CS. Lucian has the exhaust. Yasuo with the ignite. Wondering when he's going to use this wind wall. Poked pretty low. He E's in. Hits the Q. Gets exhausted. He runs the ignite onto him. Puts the wind wall to block some autos. E's onto the minion and instantly flashes across. Gets that solo kill onto Lucian through the exhaust. I'm surprised. I thought he would lose it. Pops the emote. Gets the cannon. And if you can start your lane with a solo on a Lucian... Um, it's going to be a bloody good game, you know it. So people that don't aren't aware, you can, uh, I believe it's called, is it called a Keyblade? You can, um, you can E, Q, onto a place, and especially this is really good when you have your Tornado up, and then you can displace your Q with a Flash. So if you have the knock up, you can do that, then you can, then you can get your instantly get an ult up off of that, or just knock them up and get some CC. Um, you can, there's a lot of, like, fancy mechanics on Yasuo that people... It's pretty common knowledge these days. Most of you boys know about them, but some of you guys maybe get into practice tool and give it a go. Um, as we get the Zerka Greaves. And the lane is actually situated very good here. I'm fine with this. Ah, as he gets poked out a little bit too much. Level 6. He has the Gragas top and the Zin. The Alistair could go for a roam as well for these knockups. Otherwise, it's all on to him to try and initiate. And he's getting collected by a lot of these Qs, unfortunately. Yes. Goes in again. Lucian trying to get some spacing. Looking for the ult. Hits the win wall. Ult lands. He doesn't... Sorry, the Q lands. He doesn't follow it up with the ultimate. It's going to be too risky for him. Pops the ward moves into the top side. Now, when you have a knock-up champion like the Gragas, um, if you can roam into the lanes with that setup, that alley-oop for the knock-up on the alt, 
Go for it. Do it. You got a Gragas lane, you got an alley support. Perfect. When you're level six for these rooms. He comes in, weaves the auto. And man, he is just playing with fire. He's making me nervous. See, Lucian can't really do much, right? He can, even if there or the wind wall, perfect. If he lands this, if he lands this, he can use the wind wall to block out the Lucian ultimate. But wind wall is like a 30 second cooldown. It's so goddamn high these days. Lucian, he's thinking about it. Thresh hovering in lane. Got the Zin Zhao on the top side. Look at the map. And he's just going to sit back and sustain up a little bit. Ali. Instantly we get that knock up onto the Thresh. Hits the stun. Auto. Q goes wide. And you can see Thresh was like baiting out a flash or something. This should be a free kill. If we can hit a single. There we go. The handoff. Two kills now onto the Yasuo. But unfortunately down 600 gold to red side. This Elise is 5-1 and one and absolutely snowballing the game. Keep a level ahead when you're doing this guys. Oh sh. Lucian. Too many people in League want free games. They want a game that goes smoothly from start to finish. They get a free LP. Pray for the difficult games. They're the games that you're going to improve. They're the games that you're going to make the difference. You know, 33% of your games are going to get a free win. 33% of the games are going to get a free loss. Nothing that you can do is going to change that loss. It's done. But 33% remainder is up to you, your play, your decision making. And you, in that 33%, need to turn games around. You need to go against difficult games, turn them back at, you know, those huge late game turnarounds in the Nexus with all the shutdowns. There is great comeback mechanics in League of Legends. People don't like the comeback mechanics in League, but they're phenomenal. They're very good, guys. There's, it's not just the bounties. There's plenty more, like the minions, um, the tower structures, the dragon health, the tanks. Like, there's so many things that people don't think about. And why you shouldn't give up in league games. As he gets the ultimate. Looking for the 1v3. Gets exhausted. You're going to have to try and use the wave to get out. And he does end up going down to the 7 and 1 Elise. But he's able to get a quick kill onto the Thresh. 3 and 1 now. Farm's looking decent. Slightly behind. I mean, considering he was into a Lucian matchup. And such an aggro jungle like an Elise. I would take that as Ali. This is what you need to be doing as a support. If your mid laner stuffs the wave up, come on, get in there. Dude, pull the wave for him. This is just... This can make or break the game. Set your carries up for success. If he comes back now to a stacked wave, he's able to get an item spike earlier, get to a team fight with an extra item or mythic completed. Boom, you've won the game off your, your decision making as a support to pull that freeze, man. Look at this. He would have missed this. Juicy. And you can see Lucian looking for the invade with the Camille. Gragas. What do we got? Hits that. Doesn't need to pull the ult. Goes over. Oh shit. Flashes. Gets the blue buff. And the kill onto Lucian. 4 and 1. Will hard shove the wave. He still has the ultimate. So I wouldn't... I wouldn't hate a Roma to the bot lane. He's not going to opt for it. He sees the Elise and just goes for the plate. And I guess if he ulted on the Gragas, he probably could have saved his own flash, unfortunately. But that is hindsight. And Pizang is one of the most notorious chicken stealers in the world. Him and Chovy, all they like to do is eat these camps. These wraiths. They're very delicious. I think they would probably be the tastiest camp on Summoner's Rift. Unless Scuttle Crab. Possibly marinated would be tasting better, but I'm unsure and untested. I reckon a dragon's wing wouldn't be too bad. As we're looking... He always does this zeal start, and then you're going to be transitioning into your mythic. Hits that ultimate onto Lucian, he steps forward. Weaving these autos through, here comes the Zin, gets the kill onto Lucian. Ali. Oh, if this bounty... If we get this bounty onto the lease. And we're not able to get it, she... Thresh is there to salvage her. That 700 gold bounty, 1,000 total for a kill, would be delicious on this Yasuo one trick.
Gresh picks up the alley. We don't have the flash. We don't have the ignite. Seeing on a shit ton of gold. Let's head back to base. Oh, Elise is looking for the invade. You can see the spiders. And he'll go into the brush and wait. Yep. This might be risky. It's only Elise. And she shows. Here comes the Zin. And he's going to get the bounty. He's going to get it. Bang. 1k gold over to the Yasuo. Some quick work through those wolves. Make sure to pick up the wave. He's looking for a reset, so I'd be surprised if he goes for anything too crazy, right? And God, Yasso just starts feeling oh so smooth at this point, doesn't he? <laughs> I just realized he's in 06. He has ult. And ignite. Oh, he can't quite land it. Ali hovering. 06 Jung, 03 support. I wouldn't say he's the team's only hope, but he's probably the team's only hope as he hits that ultimate onto Lucian. Do not take it, Zin. 7 and 1. Great team set up here. His team is still down 1.5 thousand gold. Now he'll finally hit the reset. I wouldn't. I mean, he's probably going to get an outright buy. I don't, I don't know how much gold he's sitting on, but probably outrageous as he gets the shield bow outright at 12 minutes in. Holy shit! So I've seen him do this setup a lot. Sometimes he'll just do he'll he'll Zerka Grieve Zeal, and then you just go straight for the shield bow, guys. Then your second is usually IE, and then sometimes then he'll go into something like a Mortal Reminder. Um, GA, like he, he definitely has different builds that he does with his setup, but usually this early game setup is every single game into the Zerkers, the, the Zeal, and then the Shield Boat. I can't remember, we did that review on um, Zukil, Zukil on Yone and Yasuo, I might, maybe he had that similar build, there's, def there's definitely some type of strategy he was doing, I can't quite recall. As also boys, every night on my stream, been spectating. All the pros in EU West boot camping, Faker, Chobi, Dornby, Showmaker, all the mid laners. It's been quite hilarious as they lose their mind against players such as Rat IRL. The boss, as we get that ultimate, Aphelios hits that flash. We have a wave coming. Is he going to... No, he's not going to hard commit. I thought he would just chase him down through this wave. But without flash, it may be just not worth it. As you can see, the Thresh comes through. Q lands, doesn't have ultimate for another 30 seconds though. And what the hell is going on top lane? How many tower? Oh my god. Fresh lands, hits the ignite onto the Yasuo and then not gonna go for it. And Pizang moving his way in, pops the ignite. Hits the Q, gets the flash out of the Thresh. One more Q is going to get it, and he gets it. Max range. Goes in for the Aphelios. Gets the Aphelios kill. Will he be able to live? Lucian flashes in. Shield bow procs, and he is just too goddamn clean. And I have so much appreciation for these one tricks. A lot of people shit talk one tricks. Or, oh, you can only play this champ, and you're Elo inflated. But, dude, sometimes League of Legends is about... Finding a champion you really enjoy and love, and just absolutely mastering it and playing it every game. You don't have to play every champion in the game, you can play just one. As long as you're enjoying the game, go for it, man. And a lot of times, even if a champion that you enjoy is weak, you'll have a better win rate and a better style on that champion than a champion that's very strong but you don't enjoy playing as much. Trust me, it can happen. You will master that champion and you will find win cons with it. In saying that, Annie is probably an exception because no one enjoys playing Annie, but that shit is just free low. As we drop down into the side lane, 15 minutes in, we... 150 CS, wait for it. And we're at 10 CS per minute. Spectacular. And it is hard to permanently side lane on the... on the, on the, on the Yasuo. Because the Camille and the Elise, they can really do, they can really track you down. It, you want to be grouping up on objectives with the Gragas and the Alistair engages. Um, but in between the objective timers, yes, you can be side laning. 
He just purchased an Infinity Edge. He has Shield Bow, Infinity Edge, 16 minutes in. And here we go. Just like I said, they all group up for the Dragon. And this is exactly what you need to be doing. The enemy team cannot match the Grag Ali Yasuo combo. Especially with no flashes on the Aphelios and the Lucian as we move in. It's that ultimate. P Zang just saves his ult. Knows he doesn't need to use it yet. Yasuo gives the kill over to that Ash. And the Elise comma shot just hits as the Ash arrow goes through. Elise dodges out with the E. The repel, repel. Here we go, here we go. Camille engages. Wind walls, the Yasuo, sorry, the Lucian ult. And he has ultimate, but you need to be a bit cautious, right? And look how he is posturing. Take note, Yasuo mains. He's not at the front. He's hanging behind his fat Gragas and Alistair. No offense. Hang behind those bodies and wait for the engage. Don't just frontline and instantly... You don't need to take every goddamn knock-up on Yasuo with the ultimate. Make a decision. Just because the Gragas goes for an ult, and you don't need to follow it every time. As somebody is here. It's the sweeper. It's Camille. Look at those long legs. Q, over. It's the wind wall. And Camille. There's nowhere you can go, honey. Takes down the Camille. Top lane wave is really juicy here, as long as his team doesn't die. Should just shove straight through top lane and look for the tower, I reckon. Not many objectives coming up. Shouldn't be any team fights. He can probably... I mean, they're playing... He's, so he's on weak side, essentially. Strong side is bot lane here. So his team just needs to wave clear while the Yasuo pumps this top lane for gold and objectives. You can see it's a 1k gold lead now for red side. He's starting to pull it back. Should be able to grab these camps if they're up. Oh, he has ult. He has ult and he's not afraid to use it. And just look at the Zin Zhao. This is perfect hovering. Xin Zhao playing towards the strong shot, strong side as you should. Q goes wide just. It's poor Camille. They're going to look for it. They're going to look for it. And now, the Xin Zhao hard commits. But look at P Zhang does. He says, no buddy. Not a good call. Runs away. Do you see how he doesn't die with the stupid decisions of his team? Maybe I spoke too early. Alistar picked. And honestly, it's just a retreat angle. One minute until Baron. No. Has win wall, right? Win walls. Q lands. And that... Oh, has to flash the Threshook. And that is why he is the number one Yasuo. He's not taking these win... He's not taking these tornadoes that he's landing. He knows it's going to be a one for one. A one for one is not worth it when you have a fucking 650 gold bounty on your head. Be patient. Your time will come to carry. That's not it. As he gets the stoppy, he gets the bloody um, BF sword. I'm going to zoom out into the top side. I always thought maybe he'd go bot side here and try and pick up the red buff or something. And this sweeper is oh so essential. Ash scouts out the Baron, they're not on it. And now he'll just farm up the top side. Look at this Elise's build. Wow. Death cap completed. Good thing about Elise is that her scaling is pretty shit house. I wouldn't say it's that much better than a Zin. Or that much worse. They both don't scale too well. But he is going to have to be 99% of his team's damage, I feel. It's the ultimate onto Lucian. Thresh able to save him. Not sure whose flash that was. A little bit awkward, it seemed, but. It's that win wall. Picks up the kill onto the Thresh now. And now he's onto the Lease looking for it. At least has to flash out. Misses the Q onto the Crab. On Q. As the Tornado, it goes wide. And he is just not taking any goddamn chances, is he? It's 
So Lisa's is looking for him. One Q might do him. And I think we're done. Maybe we, are we gonna farm the camps? Farm the camps, farm the bot lane wave, and give Nash. Trust me when I say this. If a Nash is like, if you have like a five to ten percent chance of getting the Nash or contesting it, don't do it. Go and farm the opposite side of the map and wait for the Baron to get off. Wait for their siege. Wait for a better chance. Why would you take like a two v five at Baron or whatever it is with a five to ten percent chance, like his team just did? Like, why do you do this? You'll have a better opportunity that's maybe like 30 or 40% chance that works on a Baron Siege or even after the Baron's gone. Don't do desperation plays. They're dumb. You're not like a, a, a YouTuber trying to make montages or something. Just be patient. Be smart, guys. If you want to climb. I mean, maybe you are a YouTuber or a streamer and want to make some clips. Go for it. But that's not how you're going to be able to climb, become the best player. You're going to... By doing... The problem is, man, when you start looking for those plays... They start being becoming habits in your gameplay. And once you get all these like suicidal habits, it's very hard to fix them. As he's not able to land the second Q. Threshold goes wide. And we're just waiting to see if we can get any knockups. Dragon is ocean. Dragus no flash. Alistair no flash. And River looking oh so scary. As we complete the Guardian Angel now, 22 minutes in, and that is going to allow him to play a lot more aggressive. You'll see this Guardian Angel, he'll, he'll start to play way more upfront and personal because he's able to take those risks that he wasn't able to beforehand. It's unfortunate he didn't get to use the proper stopwatch usage, but that's life sometimes, isn't it, son? As he gets the Executioners, which will be for the Mortal. 240 farm at 23, by the way. And I'm wondering, what are they going to do to try and match him in the side lane? Are they just going to run down into the base and end? It looks like it. Him is pinging. Just do not do anything until I'm there. Do not do anything until I'm there. He picks up the mortal reminder. He comes in now. As Shelly drops the inhibitor. Inhib drop is actually fine. I think Ash and Yasuo clear is good. Dropping one inhib is good. I think dropping two inhibs might be a bit of a risky call. But because there's no dragons, there's only been one dragon at 24 minutes. Dragon takes in Korean high elo is probably the lowest I've ever seen. They don't take that many dragons and stack them. So if you're this Yasuo, it's a good sign because you can set there's not going to be any... Um, there's no time pressure or limit on the soul. It's still going to be what? 35 minutes until soul point gets fought potentially like it's you're gonna be so big by then And that's why when you're playing something like a cast or a kale and the enemy's not stack stacking dragons dude, drop the inhib Take a breather farm up the camps. You're in no rush. They're not gonna take your entire base They're just not gonna take your entire base if, without the dragon the elder I, I don't see it happening unless they have a really good siege comp with a baron or something, but even then man just Take your time with it as he gets the stopwatch. So that's kind of wasted gold. Um, but it's going to enable him for the next fight to play so aggressive. He has stopwatch, has GA, has flash, level 16. He got everything he needs. This needs a knockup now. That's all he wants. As he's looking for it, he moves in. What in the hell was that damage? Holy shit. It's the ultimate. There we go. Look at him in this team fight. Hits that stopwatch. And so much damage put down onto the enemy team. He does drop, gets collected by the Aphelios. And the Gragas picks up the Lucian. And he wants to try and get the wave and get Tornado. He still has Flash. Just remember that. Maybe he tries to bait them in. He's full health with passive. I don't see the enemy team. Looks like they're just going to retreat. And what is he looking for? No GA now, unfortunately. So it's going to have to go back to a slightly more passive playstyle. You can see how he took that ultimate. He knew he was, he was throwing his life down. 
GA proc and the stopwatch. And what's the plan? Probably sell the stopwatch. Maybe start working our way towards um oh okay. Gets a QSS for that Elise Cocoon and the Thresh Hook. It's gonna enable him to play more aggressive on the front lines. Get rid of some of that CC. Yes. Dodges out. Has that Q? Probably. Would have taken it if it landed on the Lucian in the river, but not quite. And this Camille is going to become a big problem. Camille completely annihilates games at three items and onwards. As the Xin Zhao dies for no reason. You see how there's no... There, there really doesn't... Oh my god. There's really no stale time for him. He's always doing something. Farming camps. At least flashes forward. Hits that ultimate onto the Philios. And now he flashes forward. Crits his head off. And using these camps to try and stack it up again. Wait for it. He goes in. Is he able to do it? Getting the crits he needs. Lucian going to try and dash over here. And he's not going to be able to get out. Phenomenal play by Yasuo. And only Elise remaining as they ping on their way to the Baron. Enemy red buff spawning as well. And 99% like more than that. The Yasuo's would have been way too impatient on these fights. Gone in too early. Try to be like, oh, well, if I don't go in now, I'm never going to win. And then they just throw it with their team. And they go, well, at least I tried. No, be more patient. Be more reserved. Finds the Elise now. It's, oh my days. That was spectacular. You see how he gets the knockup, but then he still lands the... He, he's still able to use the EQ afterwards. You don't have to instantly, as soon as you get a knockup, hit that ultimate. You have a little bit of time, guys. A lot of fancy mechanics happen in that 0 0.5 seconds. As we hit the base, 15 and 1. 330 farm at 28 minutes. And Elise has sold all her items. Xin Zhao picks up the Nash. And now we are on the flank, and we get that ultimate cooldown. It's only 30 seconds for Yasuo late game. And the Gragas, every single time, able to find this Aphelios, and that's all you need for the Yasuo. At least buys back your items like a little bitch. And uh, finally, we have the gold lead on blue side. And look at this man, frontlining on the team like an absolute chad. Just completely outclassing the enemy here. Wait for it. Gets the kill onto the Camille. And it probably should not be an end angle. I think we should take the inhib in and then go and look for the dragon for a reset. Now, I don't even want to calculate how much farm he's up on the Lucian, which really should just never happen, but... The good news is the GA is almost back online as well. It's that base. Oh, he's still hovering. Doesn't use the ultimate on the Thresh. Uses that Merc skim, that QSS, sorry. Now we go for the Windwall and look how he plays in this little pocket with the Windwall. Oh boys, we gotta run. Boys, 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 we gotta run. This could be, this could be fucking disastrous, I won't lie to you. You both die and they get a five-man siege, you could lose the game. We have the wave. We The GA is back up here too. Ah, and the Camille pops the ultimate. Playing towards... Ooh, hits the ultimate onto the lease and where the GA is procced. Somebody save him. And I think we just leave. Yeah, we just leave. Sorry, brother. Hey man, you had a good- oh shit. Oh shit, the grudge. Oh shit, the grudge. And we die to the Camille. Hey, please tell me they don't get the end here. You can see the Winions in the enemy base though. 50 second death timer. 50 second.
Their nearest wave is the bot lane wave. If they want to end, it has to be through bot. And let's see if Xin Zhao can do anything. And they're looking... Ooh. They're looking for the end bot side. Let's see if Xin can save it. Xin stalling as long as he can. Come on, brother. Stall, stall, stall. Beautiful, beautiful stall. He stops the wave. And they've only... Got 10 seconds before the... You got Alistar, you got Gragas up now with a, with an ultimate. And Yasuo in 20. They're going to try and double in here, but then get out. And what's our buy? Okay, let me have a think. So... He upgraded... Oh my god, okay. He sold boots for steel caps. He upgraded to a Merc Skim, and now he has a Randuins. What is the ra what did he swap for the Randuins, guys? Mortal Reminder. No, he still has Mortal. The GA. The GA is gone. He has the Randuins. Okay. Gonna make him so much beefier. That beautiful active if he goes into the middle of the fight. We're late game, baby. Keep your boots as Yasuo. Yasuo ain't no boot selling champion. Boot selling champions like Fizz, like TF, usually AP champs. I can get some extra mobility from things like Cosmic Drive and Lich Bane do work well. But uh, sometimes on AD champs selling boots, you're so slow that even though you're so strong, it's just not going to happen because you, you're going to get outspaced. Who are you guys targeting in these fights? The Lucian is pretty strong now. I still think the Aphelios number one. At least number the problem with focusing at least is she has stopwatch plus a repel. Even if you hard focus her, it's gonna take you like six seconds to get through her. Which is longer than I can last sometimes, as we contest the mid lane wave. This wind wall value is so good, and we're waiting. Just waiting for the Gragas to come through with the ultimate. Beautiful ult onto the back lane. And look at P-Zang focusing the Aphelios down. He has his eyes set on one man and one man only. He's zooming through the wave. Looking for the crits. Able to get one. Looking for another. Gets the Elise. And that is an ace, ladies and gentlemen. 33 minutes in. The problem is, can he end the game? You have Camille in 40. Aphelios in 35. He can't do it. It's unendable. I've just I've just calculated it's not doable. He'll kill one tower and then yeah, it's not doable. You could get one tower and you'd have the Thresher Philios in your face. It's not worth it. He hits the base here. And is there any more upgrades to be made? There's not. Just the elixir to be purchased. We're full build. I wouldn't be surprised if he sells the Randuins or the GA when the actives back up. And this game is so hard for the Yasuo to win. You could so easily say, fuck my team, man. They suck. They don't want to win. You can't be that guy in League of Legends. These tough struggles are the games you want. These are the games that build you character. These are the games that make you an actual solid player if you're able to turn them and win them. Even if you lose this game, go back over the replay and look at your mistakes. Because you guaranteed have made... P. Zang has made mistakes this game, surely. Just small, tiny errors. They're the things you can control and can improve. Don't look at your teammates' bloody 10 deaths or whatnot. There's no point. You can't move that. You, that's, it's solid. It's rock solid. That's what's happened. You can only control your own movements, actions in the game. And that's how you become a good player. It's the ultimate. Aphelios hits the flash and the Gale Force. Not able to gap close. Gets a kill onto the Lease. And look at the Camille in their base. Blue side base is looking to be annihilated by a fucking four and a half item Camille. And someone needs to go home. No one's able to get home. And Aphelios won't. No, Aphelios is not letting it. Oh my god. Please, somebody get back to base. I can't see it. I can't see it. The spectator's not. Please tell me it's saved. Oh my god, Ash, thank Christ. What the hell is the Nexus health? 36 minutes. His whole team is up. 
He doesn't have Flash. 15 seconds on the Thresh, 20 seconds on the Lucian. By the time his wave gets, gets here, the team is spawning. And he's just stalling. Gragas has that ultimate again. No, you're not going to get me. Try and bait them out a little bit. On the edge of my seat here. We need a big Grag Assault. Gragas makes his way in. Huge knock up. We get the Aphelios. We get the Thresh. Elise is down. Everybody is down. And that is a terrific 23 and 2 hard carry by the number one Yasuo in the world. And there should be no debate after watching this why he is the number one. Thank you for watching today's video, guys. Loved making it. What a banger. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.